Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in the Bundesliga career mode. This is episode number 86 and we start today's episode off with a couple of scout reports here from our German-based and Brazil-based scouts. They look for some more young talent for our Hamburg Academy. As I said in the last episode, I think it might have been, that we got some players coming into the first team right now and being promoted to our first team setup. And as you can see, these are the three players. Uh, Damis Skitas, a Brazilian goalkeeper, 17 years old, 6'4" for a five-star week for not too bad. Uh, Felix Quayner, probably one of our best youth prospects of the entire series. Such a shame we'll never get to develop the guy. He's got the exciting prospect tag. He's 16 years old, six foot two, can play right back and left back, low high work rate, and he's already 63 overall, I think he was. And Ricardo Alva uh, Alves, a Brazilian holding midfielder. That's 55 overall. But of course, the big news is not the players that are coming into the team from our academy, but of course, a player that's leaving our first 11 for the month of April. Cesar Valente, the star of the show, the hero of this Hamburg side, is out for the remainder of April. Well, we're just going to April right now, but uh, still, he's going to be out for the entire month of April, and he might miss a couple of games at the start of May as well. And depending on what happens, if his injury gets worse, then he could be out for the rest of the season. So, seven games to go in the Bundesliga. Right now, we are five points clear of Bayern Munich at top of the table, but without Cesar Valente for the whole of of April, how will we do as Tom Mikel stands in for our 21-year-old Brazilian goalkeeper? But still, for the first game of today's episode, Mikel would stand in for his first game in the absence of Valente as we hosted Eintracht Frankfurt here at the Vox Park Stadion. And what a way to make an impression, just 16 minutes in, a free header in the centre for Eintracht Frankfurt and a great chance for them to take the lead. But Tom Mikel made an incredible save to deny Luke de Jong with an unbelievable reaction stop with the right glove and turn it behind for a corner. What a stop by Mikel and our standing goalkeeper kept the score scoreless. So a brilliant save and it was still 0-0 but a few minutes later another great chance for the away side. Once again Dion got free in the area for a cross and at the second time of asking he would find the back of the net and make it Hamburg 0 Eintracht Frankfurt 1 because the volley smacked the bar. It came down, hit the turf and then on the rebound he won the header against Jonathan Tarr and put the ball into the back of the net with Mikel just gathering his senses after getting back up after diving for the first shot so De Jong causing me problems early on giving the away side the lead we can't blame Mikel for that goal and it is 1-0 to Eintracht Frankfurt so a really poor start for us in this game and our only real chance came a couple minutes before the break we won ourselves a free kick no Valencia to take it so Royce went for goal but couldn't hit the target so 1-0 to Frankfurt at the break they've been playing much better than us and looking the better team in the first half but in the second half, just 12 minutes after the restart, we would get ourselves back on level terms. And with Valente off the pitch right now, Valente currently injured, it's the time to shine for Angel Correa. He's been one of our most important players over the course of this series. Ever since his arrival at the start of Season 2, he's been our top scorer ever since he's come in. He's got his 19th goal in the Bundesliga with that equaliser there. And he's on course for his third straight 20-plus goal year for Hamburg, if that makes sense. But still, Hamburg won, Eintracht Frankfurt won. In the 64th minute, a good chance for to take the lead here. Lewis Holt went for goal from range on the volley on his weaker right foot, but sadly hit the outside of the post and he went behind for a goal kick. So still 1 1. And one of the ch uh, final chances fell here with 30 minutes to go. We won ourselves the ball back here and went on a break. Altintas found our goal scorer, Correa, through towards Philippe Coutinho, who arrived in the January trans window. He gives it to Correa in space, who goes for goal, but sadly it hits the post and the away side get the danger clear. And it was how the game would finish. Final score, Hamburg 1, Eintracht Frankfurt 1. We slip up once again in the Bundesliga. I have said that way too many times this season for my liking. We don't get ourselves the three points. We turned it round in the second half and definitely deserved at least a point. And with the chances we had, I think we'd be disappointed not to have got all three. But in the end, it is Eintracht Frankfurt who's going to uh, claim a very, very precious point and a disappointing two points drop for Hamburg once again. So Eintracht Frankfurt having a terrible season right now. 16th plays but that draw could be crucial for their hopes of staying up and surviving so another really disappointing game can't point the fingers at Mikel for not getting the three points in that one but either way 
Just really frustrating how he hit the woodwork twice in the second half and could not find a second goal to win us the game. But for the second of three games in today's episode here, we travel away from home to Spain for our Champions League quarterfinal first leg here, taking on Sevilla. Now, of course, we got through the round of 16 by beating Marseille over two legs by five goals to one. So now taking on Sevilla here away from home, despite Valente being injured, I still fancied our chances of getting the win. But the first chance fell to Sevilla. And how about this? They would open the scoring 15 minutes in and when this goal went in I mean I just I just couldn't believe it man seriously they crossed the ball deep to the far post where Krychowiak was running to and for Tom McKell he made an incredible save in that last game against Eintracht Frankfurt we couldn't blame him for the goal but for this goal the opening goal of the game how on earth do you get beat at your near post there with that header from such a tight angle I mean no one is expecting him to be as good as Cesar is but seriously Seriously, what a howler from Mikel. How on earth he failed to keep that out there, I've got no idea. And Krychowiak squeezes the ball in from an impossible angle and gives Sevilla the opening goal of the tie. So 1-0 to the Spanish side. We tried to respond here in the 25th minute, but Coutinho rifled his volley way over the bar and harmlessly behind for a goal kick. With five minutes to go though before the halftime break, Correa's on the ball, dances around his man, gives it to Felipe Coutinho with the burger spin, rolls it off towards Correa. Correa, who finds the back of the net and just before the break we do get ourselves back on level terms and grab a crucial and much needed away goal here in Spain. Coutinho and Correa have been a great partnership ever since Coutinho was signed in the January trans window. He's always looked really lively and his link up play with the Argentine has been fantastic. Another assist for Coutinho, another goal for Correa. That's now his fifth in the Champions League and in total his 24th of of the season. Sevilla won, Hamburg won, we are back on level terms and my word did we need this, not playing too well and needing to respond in some way. From kickoff as well, Sevilla try and pass the ball through towards Koke down the right side here. He takes it around Marco Royce and plays it back towards Rami, but Royce dives in and wins the ball back for us here, gives it to Correa and suddenly we have a two on one. Correa is then sent through against the goalkeeper and finds the back of the net and in an instant we went from 1-0 down to 2-1 up as Correa won once again celebrates in front of the travelling Hamburg faithful. An absolute bottle job from Sevilla holding on to the lead before the break. They throw it away. Royce with the tackle. Great through ball to Correa. And for some reason I double step over the air for no reason whatsoever. I've got no idea why I did that. There was no need but hey maybe I was just trying to make it fancy or put the goalkeeper off. Either way you found the back of the net. That's all that matters. It's Sevilla 1, Hamburg 2. So we take the lead for the first time in the game until Turn the game on its head. Sevilla completely choking before half time to be a goal up, looking good, looking confident, and now trailing the game for the first time. They tried to respond directly from kickoff like we did as well, but fired that shot way wide the post on behind for a goal. Again, half time, as you can see, they have been dominated possession, but I thought the game was pretty even. With 12 minutes to go, though, another great chance for Sevilla to get themselves back on level terms here. Immobile finds Conor Plianca down the right hand side, and Hoff's been fantastic ever since we signed him right in the first episode. He got beat there there way too easily. The shot was taken. Mikel made a fabulous save at his near post to try and make up for his error in the first uh, half. But unfortunately for us, the rebound fell straight to Krychowiak, who headed the ball into the unguarded net and got his second of the game to make it 2-2. So the half gets beat by his man there. And Mikel does make a great save, to be fair to him, at his near post. But Krychowiak wins the header, puts it into the open goal, quite similar to the Eintracht Frankfurt goal in the last game, and makes it 2-2. And that was how the game would finish. So final score, Sevilla 2, Hamburg 2. A credible draw for the Spanish side. And that's an extremely disappointing to way, uh, way to end that game because with 10 minutes to go, we were leading by two goals to one. And of course, having those two away goals, if we were to hold on to that result, Sevilla would need to score two in Germany at the Volkspark Stadion. And I'd fancy our chances of holding on, not letting that happen, and going through to the semi finals. But now, even though we have the advantage with the away goal, and no Sevilla will still need to score, they were very, very good in that game, looked very menacing all game long. And I'm not too confident my chances of progressing now to the semi finals, even though you would still say we will be considered favourites. 
favourite. So right now, we are struggling big time. We are out of form. We are not playing well. We're without Cesar Valente still. We're now midway through April. Well, uh, the beginning to midway through April. And we really are beginning to struggle. But for the third and final game of today's episode, we take on Red Bull Leipzig. Back at the Vox Park Stadion. Back in Germany. Back in the Bundesliga. Desperate to finally return to winning ways after a couple of games without one. We had a couple of early chances in this game. MTG with a nice piece of skill there. The advanced rainbow into the volley, but Sally went wide the post and behind for a goal kick. And in the 38th minute, another good chance here is Dendere gets played forward. He goes for goal, but can't keep the shot down, and it goes over the bar. So still goalless in this game. That was the score at a break, 0-0. We had been the far superior side, but we just could not open the scoring. And in the second half, 10 minutes after the restart here, Diekmeier finds Dendera through towards Timo Werner, back towards Dendera, running through, gets clear of the last man and goes for goal. But Galaxy makes an incredible save at his near post and pounces on the rebound as well. So still goalless in this game. And the final chance would fall here with seven minutes to go. We went to an all-out attack style of play, long ball, just desperately trying to get any chance we could to possibly win the game later on and claim a massive three points. It fell here with Stendera finding Correa, who takes it around his man, gets into the area, rides the challenge after the fake shot. He shoots Galaxy, saves it, but it comes to Werner, who puts it into the open goal to win us the game. But unfortunately, on the far side, the linesman has his flag up and chalks the goal off correctly for offside. And I couldn't believe it. It was one of those moments where I was jumping around my living room going absolutely crazy. Yes, yes, yes. We finally scored. We finally won the game. But unfortunately, I didn't realise it at the time. Only when I turned around with my hands on my head, could not believe it. I saw the linesman with his flag up and the goal was indeed correctly disallowed for offside. So final score, Hamburg nil, Red Bull Leipzig nil. You'll see these stats. Ten shots, four on target but no goals we fail to score we fail to win it's three draws in a row our form right now is hideous we are struggling players are getting too tired to keep on playing we've got a congestive fixture list and only get three or four days rest maximum in between games and with Cesar Valente out for the rest of the month still and Bayern Munich only one point behind us I think it's safe to say that our dreams of the treble are rapidly fading because simply put we cannot cope with all this pressure pressure but that will end today's episode of the Bundesliga career mode guys a big thank you for watching I really hope you have enjoyed it if you're enjoying today's episode then please leave a like likes of course much appreciated and it will help the channel grow as well much love to you all have a fantastic Sunday evening hope you had a great weekend and I'll see you for the next episode in the Bundesliga career mode very soon